I got 341 days sober, and next year's my 50th anniversary of show business. Let's do a fucking show, huh? You know something people don't talk about in public anymore? Pussy farts. <laughs> now, I said that on my last HBO show, and apparently some people don't know what a pussy fart is. Because I got some inquiries. Here's the deal. A pussy fart is like when you're making love to a woman who's got a little extra air in her vagina. And every time you thrust forward, it's kind of a... <laughs> And the two of you are just lying there, each is wondering if the other one farted. And the man is usually thinking, maybe she farts when she comes. Maybe she took a shit. Man, I gotta stay out of that fucking bar. Another word you don't hear too often is dingleberries. You know, you never hear it on Meet the Press. I think it's because dingleberries is one of them words you don't say too much past your 10th birthday. It's not a grown-up's word. It's a kid's word. Dingleberries! Always sounded kind of Christmassy to me. Don't you think it has a holiday ring to it? Dingleberries. John, you might want to hang some dingleberries over the front door. Then when Mary Ann comes over, she can kiss you under the dingleberries. It is to be devoutly wished that she would kiss me under the dingleberries. <laughs> Cornhole is another word you don't hear enough. You don't hear that nearly enough, you know? It's a good word. It's a solid word. It's a tough word. It's a man's kind of word. It's got a masculine sound. It's like, like, like shotgun and ash can and tow truck. Cornhole. Everything's been, everything's been sanitized now and cleaned up. First with these fucking Christians. You just start with them. You know, I'm saying, you know, that's just one. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You know. But let's, let's not leave out these PC campus liberal assholes. I mean, they're just as fucking bad from a different direction. But everything's different. Everything's been polished up now. It's anal intercourse. Anal rape. Bullshit. Cornhole. Now, I'm a big fan of the uh, primetime crime shows. I like all of them pretty much. You know, I like Law and & Order and all the spinoffs of that. I like um, CSI and all of those spinoffs. Cause, yeah, because they're forensic shows, you know? And I'm just waiting for one night to be sitting there watching one of them shows. And, and the, uh, the chief medical examiner turns to the lead detective and says, Steve, looks to me like after they killed this guy, the perpetrators rolled him over and cornholed him about 30 or 40 fucking times. That there is a posthumous multiple cornhole entry wound. In prison, it's a social activity. Yeah, it's right up there on the bulletin board. Checkers, handball, cornholing. Now, just to change the subject a little bit, do you realize, do you realize that right this second, right now, somewhere around the world, some guy is getting ready to kill himself. <laughs> Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Do you ever stop and think about that kind of shit? I do. It's fun. And it's interesting. And it's true. Right this second, some guy is getting ready to bite the big bazooka. Because statistics show that every year a million people commit suicide. A million. That's 2,800 a day. That's one every 30 seconds. <laughs> there goes another guy. And I say guy, say guy, because men are four times more likely than women to commit suicide. Even though women attempt it more. 
So men are better at it. That's something else you gals will want to be working on. Well, if you want to be truly equal, you're going to have to start taking your own lives in greater numbers. But, yeah. But I just think it's interesting to know, interesting, that's a big word in this show for me, interesting to know that at any moment, the odds are good that some guy is dragging a chair across the garage floor, <laughs> trying to get it right underneath that ceiling beam. We don't want to be too far off center. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. <laughs> Somewhere else, another guy is going over and getting a gun out of a dresser drawer. Somebody else is opening up a brand new package of razor blades. Maybe struggling with the cellophane a little bit, you know. Oh, shit, it's always something. God damn it. I just think that's interesting as hell. That's probably the most interesting thing you can do with your life. End it. I don't think I could do that, though. Could you? God. I couldn't commit suicide if my life depended on it. But I understand it, you know. I think I do. I don't wonder about it. I don't wonder, well, why did he do that? Or what was going through his mind? You know what I wonder? Where did he find a fucking time? <laughs> Who's got time to be committing suicide? Aren't you busy? I got shit to do. <laughs> suicide would be way down on my list. Probably down past lighting my own house on fire. <laughs> I might want to try a little self-mutilation first. You know, take a couple of hunks out of my arm. See if I like the general idea. Because you got to have priorities, man. You know? And you got to have a plan, too, for something like that. Got to plan that shit. People don't just run out the house and jump off a bridge. There are things you have to decide. Timing is important. When you're going to do it. Well, let me see now. Wednesday's out. Got to take Timmy to the circus. Survivor's on on Thursday. <laughs> Friday, I got my colon cleansing. <laughs> Folks are coming over on Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> By God, that'd be just a thing. Maybe mom will find my body. Serve her right for fucking me up the way she did. <laughs> then you have to pick a method. How are you going to do it? Well, let me see now. Afraid of heights, that's no good. Can't swallow pills, don't like the sight of blood. Fucking ovens are electric. I lie down in front of a train, except the Amtrak can come through here in 30 goddamn years. Maybe I'll just take a gun and shoot myself in the mouth. Uh, suppose I miss. People be laughing at me. Suppose I live. I have a big fucking hole in my head. I have to wear some kind of dumbass hat. Well, I guess I just hang myself. That'd be good. Gotta get a rope. Oh, shit, it's always something. I got a rope in the garage. Ah, it's got a lot of grease and paint on it. Don't want to get this stuff on my neck. Walmart's having a special on rope this weekend. No sense spending a lot of money to kill myself. Then again, I can always put it on my credit card. I'll never have to pay the fucking thing. That's it then. I'm hanging myself and Walmart's paying for it. What's next? A note. Oh, Jesus. Gotta express myself. Hell, if I could express myself, I wouldn't be thinking of doing something like this. Where's a pen? Can never find a pen. Told the kids not to move the pen away from that telephone. Goddamn kids. Well, let's just kill them too. Make it one of them family package deals. Ah, here's a pen. I'll just jam it into my fucking neck and get it over with. Let's see now. Where do you put the date? Upper left. I can never remember that. To whom it may concern. Uh, sounds kind of impersonal. Dear Marzell. Uh, 
leaves it out to kids. I know. Hey, guys, guess what? <laughs> Keep on reading. How are you? I hope you are fine. I am not fine. As you can no doubt tell from me hanging here from the ceiling fixture. You are the ones who drove me to this. I was doing just fine until you fuckers came along. I hope you're happy now that I'm goddamn dead. Sign the corpse in this room. P.S. Fuck you people. That would be a good note. I don't think a writer could ever commit suicide. Do you? Writer would be too busy working on a note all goddamn year. Trying to get it just right. First draft, second draft, third revision, whole new ending. Finally, turn it into a book proposal and have a reason to live. That wouldn't work. I think about stuff like that. It's interesting to me, like I said. Suicide's interesting. Life is filled with interesting things. That's why I could never commit suicide. I'm having too much fun. Keeping an eye on you folks. Watching what you do. Human behavior. That's what I like. Humans do some really interesting things. Like, besides killing ourselves, we also kill each other. Murder. And we're the only ones who do that, by the way. We're the only species on Earth that deliberately kills members of our own species for personal gain. Or pleasure. Sometimes it's just fun. <laughs> we're also the only species that deliberately kills members of another species for personal gain. Or pleasure. That's what hunters do. They kill for pleasure. That's us. Human beings. Interesting folks. Murderers. Here's an interesting form of murder we come up with. Assassination. You know what's interesting about assassination? Well, not only does it change those popularity polls in a big fucking hurry, <laughs> but it's also interesting to notice who it is we assassinate. Do you ever notice who it is? Stop to think of who it is we kill. It's always people who've told us to live together in harmony and try to love one another. Jesus, Gandhi, Lincoln, John Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Medgar Evers, Malcolm X, John Lennon. They all said, try to live together peacefully. Bam! <laughs> right in the fucking head. <laughs> Apparently, we're not ready for that. <laughs> yeah, that's difficult behavior for us. We're too busy sitting around trying to think up ways to kill each other. Here's one we came up with. It's efficient, too. Genocide, you know? Killing large numbers of people simply because they don't look like you, they don't talk like you, and they don't have the same kind of hats you do. <laughs> you ever notice that anytime you see two groups of people who really hate each other, chances are good they're wearing different kind of hats. <laughs> Keep an eye on that, it might be important. <laughs> but anytime there's genocide, there are always mass graves. Right? Every time we kill some dictator and go march into his country, we always find mass graves. Thousands and thousands of dead bodies of people the dictator killed. And everybody over here gets horrified. Whoa, mass graves, mass graves, whoa. Well, shit, what's a guy supposed to do with a couple thousand people he just killed? <laughs> Dig separate holes? Fuck that shit. It's labor intensive. Get real. The whole idea of killing a large number of people at one time in one place is convenience. Efficiency. Throw them in the fucking hole. Look at it this way. At least the dictator had the decency to throw a little dirt on them. Give the guy some credit. Dictator's a busy man. Got a lot on his mind. Like trying to figure out who's planning to kill him. So he can pick him up, put him in prison, and torture them. Torture. That's another one of our heartwarming human activities we picked up along the way. Torturing each other. You want to hear a really cool torture that the Romans invented? They also used it as a form of capital punishment. It's really creative. They would take the guy in question, stuff him in a burlap sack, seal the sack up real tight, and throw it in the river. But, and here's the creative part, inside the sack with the guy, they would put a dog, a monkey, and a snake. Okay? A dog, a monkey, and a snake. That's fucking creative. Imagine being inside a burlap sack, underwater, in the dark, sitting next to a drowning monkey. Think he'd be moving around a little bit? The dog would be going ape shit, we know that. And the snake, well, he'd probably be getting curious about what all the activity was inside the sack. He might do anything. But whatever he did, it would probably involve venom and his teeth. You know what you'd be doing? You'd be praying to God that the snake bit the monkey and the dog ate the snake. Praying. Yeah, venom. 